Today, I want to talk about how the Swiss government needs help with the Credit Suisse toxic AMC swaps, and how Credit Suisse was insolvent months before their collapse. I want to explain why this is really important, and why many other hedge funds out there are likely already insolvent too. So stay tuned, and let's make some money. And now I'll dive straight in with the key information. So, Reuters tweeted saying the Swiss financial watchdog calls for stronger powers after the Credit Suisse crash. Which, as Phil For Real says, is basically the Swiss government saying that we need help paying for AMC. So let's go through this article and figure out exactly what happened to Credit Suisse and why the Swiss financial watchdog needs help. So it says that Credit Suisse came close to imploding months before its eventual rescue, the Swiss financial regulator said on Tuesday in its first detailed account of the crisis. The regulator said it took far-reaching and invasive measures to rectify the deficiencies it found at Credit Suisse as panicked customers withdrew huge amounts of cash after a string of losses and scandals. But Finma said that its liquidity measures were unable to avert the imminent failure of the bank in mid-March 2023 saying although its actions had an effect, they were unable to overcome the cause of the loss of confidence, such as shortcomings in strategy implementation and in risk management. The regulator conducted 108 reviews at Credit Suisse and found 382 points requiring action. And without help or without these new instruments, the probability of a major bank collapsing again will simply be higher than if we have these new instruments that we're demanding. So Credit Suisse actually came near to collapse in late 2022, with the embattled bank very close on several occasions. The Swiss regulator and the Swiss central bank actually had to inject 50 billion Swiss francs or $57 billion in 2022 to effectively rescue Credit Suisse. So by late 2022, Credit Suisse were already insolvent and were taking Swiss or Switzerland bailouts. So Credit Suisse was already insolvent, it was already failing these margin requirements or liquidity measures and already required a $50 billion bailout. But yet the bank was given this money and allowed to carry on even though they had failed margin calls, just in case the bank managed to turn it around. But obviously, ultimately, Credit Suisse could not turn it around. Credit Suisse ended up collapsing and had to be purchased and taken over by UBS. Now, what's interesting about this is two things. Credit Suisse was obviously already insolvent and had massive, massive losses, which have effectively just been passed onto UBS. UBS is still holding these toxic positions, and it's likely burning a hole in their pocket, which is why the Swiss regulators need additional powers. But also, it's interesting the fact that Credit Suisse was insolvent for some time, at least three or four months, but was allowed to carry on. They were given this $50 billion bailout even though they failed liquidity measures and margin calls and were allowed to continue with these losses getting even worse. And therefore, actually, it's likely there's many other hedge funds out there, maybe some we know of, that are also insolvent but are simply being allowed to carry on for the moment. Maybe these banks are telling the regulators those AMC shareholders are just about to sell and our unrealized losses will become unrealized profits in no time. They're telling these regulators they're just about to close their short positions for massive gains when those retail investors just sell all those AMC shares. But obviously, these hedge funds have another thing coming because as far as I'm aware, many retail investors aren't selling their shares and therefore they will at some point eventually be cut off. Either that or more hedge funds will end up collapsing, taking down even more until eventually the Fed or the SEC draws a line in the sand and says, right, enough is enough. If these shorts cannot escape from their short positions in a set amount of time, at some point they will be closed down. On top of that, I wanted to quickly recap the group's trading record over the last two weeks. We've taken 26 trades, had 24 winning trades, and only two small losing trades. You can go back and check my videos for the proof of all of these trades being called and all of the gains being incurred on stocks like JTAI, ADTX, CCCC, STTK, FRGT and many others. I also wanted to recap the best day we've had in the group so far today with two back-to-back 100% -back gainers. 
So today, or well yesterday, I called Shopify and AMD for a swing trade. Kevin locked in 90% on Shopify, Lit Harbor on his first options trade ever, locked in nearly 100% as well. D-Town locked in $900 on Tesla, $900 on Shopify, and $150 on CCCC. Carly locked in 40% and then another 15% on top of that, and the entire group smashed it. Two 100% gainers back to back is absolutely insane. So guys, be sure to join the Millionaire Mindset Trading Group linked in the description below. And so why do I think this could be happening sooner than many think? Well, check out this tweet from Gur Gavin. He tweeted saying investors pulled out $5 billion from the Nasdaq on Friday saying this was the biggest one day outflow since the dot com bubble peak in 2000. And he said the Nasdaq fell 70% over the next two years after that. So it seems tons and tons of money is being withdrawn from the markets right now. Obviously, the wider market has been on an absolute tear over the last couple of weeks, and we know that it's very, very overbought. This was actually something I covered in my previous video about how we are indeed in a bubble, how markets are indeed overbought, but it's near impossible to time the very tippy top of the market and silly to try and short the top or what might not be the top. That's why I've said we always need to first wait for confirmation. But what this is saying is that many, many investors out there are taking their money and running. Barchar added saying 81% of S&P 500 stocks are trading above their 100 day moving average. We've been here twice before this year. As soon as this massive amount of stocks was trading above their 100 day moving average, the markets crashed or at least fell 5, 10, 15, 20% fairly quickly afterwards. Obviously, the market is overbought. Obviously, the market needs to pull back. Maybe it's going to pull back 5, 10, 15, 20%, maybe even more, and continue its crash. Obviously, timing the top is very, very difficult, nigh on impossible, but it will happen. And obviously, when the market does crash, many of these hedge funds will be in an even worse position than they're currently in and will be closed down and liquidated. MAC10 added saying bulls are pulling out all the stops to push the S&P 500 to a new all-time high in these last two weeks of 2023. But added saying unfortunately this is already the largest consecutive weekly percent gain in 25 years. He said more likely a massive crash is about to happen. And obviously we know when the crash happens, these hedge funds will be liquidated and forced to close out of their long and short positions. And at that point, the squeeze occurs, especially because Markets with May has given us a little more detail on the SEC's new short selling transparency rules. She said, you all know I don't do MOAS trades. However, to help you all out, and because quite frankly, I think it's funny, the section you're looking for is paragraph 202 to 213. She said it ends with this paragraph, which I'll read in a second, but she's very nicely summarised and explained what the paragraph is saying. She said the SEC can't and isn't trying to stop the mother of all short squeezes from happening and from running over a hedge fund with a big short position. The SEC is effectively saying go ahead and run over that hedge fund. The SEC just wants to understand the potential systemic fallout. So here it says data of hedge funds with large short positions might allow the SEC to better observe these positions, study, and more appropriately respond to any market events that arise. For example, if the SEC had form SHO data during the meme stock events of January 2021, then it would have had a clearer view as to which hedge funds held large short positions prior to the volatility event, and which hedge funds were at greatest risk of suffering significant harm from the short squeezes. While the data will not aid the Commission in responding to real-time market events, it does aid the Commission in developing responses to events over a longer time horizon. Regulatory changes rarely happen in real-time and involve careful analysis prior to implementation. 
So basically what they're saying is the SEC wants to implement these rules not to stop a hedge fund getting ran over in a short squeeze, but just to see which hedge funds are shorting which stocks and how much they're shorting, so they can potentially change these short selling rules in the future if they so need to. AKA if they identify some hedge funds out there shorting a float multiple times over, they can create new rules to stop this from happening in the future. Which just basically means the SEC is 100% okay with more short squeezes going ahead in the future. Now Nate also tweeted saying, seeing Charles Gasprino talking about squeezes on steroids. He knows it's coming, yet he's been denying it and trashing apes for years. And that's effectively what Charles Gasprino and the mainstream media is being paid to do. He said what we've been saying for years is finally being proven. It's likely when the squeeze does happen that many of these mainstream media outlets will say the squeeze only happened because the SEC changed the rules. It's also interesting that over the last few days or the last couple of weeks, Charles Gasprino has actually stopped tweeting at many people in the community and stopped tweeting so much about AMC as well. Likely because he knows the squeeze is coming. And finally, Planet of the Apes also tweeted this screenshot from the AMC order flow showing a massive, massive AMC buy order. Somebody out there, likely a hedge fund potentially preparing for the squeeze, just bought up 1.3 million shares. As I've said before, somebody always knows something. So somebody out there clearly is buying these 1.3 million shares for a reason. But guys, be sure to let me know what you think down in the comments below. And as always, guys, be sure to ding that notification bell, because that way you'll be alerted when I upload a new video. Cheers.